Hello and a very warm welcome to this special. We are looking back on a comfortable series win for India in the West Indies, but it just sets up an intriguing home season where the team will be quite busy. I've got Anil Kumble, former India captain and coach, uh, joining me for some thoughts on the series that has just taken place and what we can look forward to. Thank you so much for your time, Anil. First Pleasure, of all, Kaura. Um, the, the, this 2-0 win, in a sense, highlighting the gulf between the two teams. Yeah, absolutely. I think India has been a top team for a while now. And then, uh, you know, West Indies have had its issues. Uh, we have seen over the years that, uh, you know, it's not the same dominating West Indies that we have so used to seeing growing up. Uh, unfortunately, the last uh, you know, decade or more, uh, West Indies cricket uh, has gone down. Uh, there was a little bit of hope. Uh, when they beat England uh, in their conditions and also when they won that uh, wonderful test match in Headingley. But unfortunately, uh, West Indies haven't been able to put uh, a team together to beat uh, and, and repeatedly uh, come up with uh, performances consi consistently. So that's been the bane for West Indies. Uh, but I think India was uh, certainly dominating uh, throughout the series, uh, you know, if, even if you take the T20 uh, ODI and then of course uh, the test series. Before I talk specifics with you Anil, these were the first two test matches India played under this World Test Championship. It's underway in other competitions as well. The Ashes uh, test matches as well as uh, Sri Lanka, New Zealand was part of the World Test Championship. Your thoughts on the idea itself before we discuss it a little further? Yeah, I think you know being a part of the cricket committee I've uh, been discussing the World Test Championship for a long, long time and I'm really glad that uh, we have finally uh, got it underway. Uh, I know uh, there are some complexities, but I think this is the best possible uh, uh, competition that you can come up with for Test cricket. Uh, you know, we all felt and I think it's, it's pretty obvious that we uh, wanted to bring back some kind of a context into Test cricket. Uh, people look at context to the number of uh, people watching test cricket, but I think those two are uh, separate uh, discussions or debate altogether. So we wanted to bring in a lot more context to the game. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that uh, under the circumstances, uh, this is the best possible uh, uh, point system that you can come up with. Actually, just throw some more light on this point system. I mean, for the fan on the outside is going to wonder, here we are, India playing uh, two test matches and winning these two test matches going to 120 points. Whereas you play an Ashes series and your team could win as many as four test matches and not get to 120 points. It's 24 points to a per, <laughs> per win in that. Um, what's the... What's the thought process behind this design? Does it places does it place teams who are playing shorter test series at an advantage? Yeah, I think uh, you know, God of uh, when you look at the overall scheme of things and the way cricket is structured uh, in 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 the world, uh, you know, it has its own complexities. Where bilateral series, uh, some series have five test matches, some series have three, some have two, and some have only one, uh, and some have four. So I don't think you can change that. In an ideal scenario, uh, you would want uh, a competition like an IPL where you have seven home, seven away, like that. If, if you can come up with uh, 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 an overall nine-team competition, uh, which is what it is in the current World Test Championship, then I think it's an ideal world for everyone to understand. But unfortunately, you need to work around with what is available today and what is the actual uh, uh, reality on the ground. And that is... Uh, you know, series have been already uh, uh, structured and, and then understood uh, that they would be playing over the next uh, few years. So you have to manage uh, some sort of a, a competition which can bring in uh, some uh, semblance as you uh, let the competition go through its entire course. Uh, so I think it's a bit too early when you look at the points table. Yes, England gets 24 for winning uh, an Ashes uh, test match, but India gets 60 for beating West Indies. Uh, in that same vein, I mean, you know, if India had lost a test match against West Indies, yeah. India would have lost 60. So, yes, there are pros and cons. Right, let's see how that pans out. But let me start asking you about some of the individuals. I've got to start by asking you about Jaspeet Bumrah, who came into uh, the scheme of things around the time when you were India coach. Now, just seeing his development as a test match bowler, and especially these two test matches, What's struck you the most in terms of his skill sets and how they've improved? No, I think he's an amazing uh, cricketer. Uh, you know, for a young boy who walked into uh, 
uh, Mumbai Indians uh, in an IPL uh, when I was a part of Mumbai Indians uh, to now uh, he's, he's just grown in stature, he's just grown in his skill sets like you said, he's much stronger, fitter uh, and, and he's added a bit of pace. Uh, he's a lot more consistent. He knows exactly how to get wickets. It's not just about the skills that you have or you possess in terms of ability to bowl in, away, bouncer, whatever. But I think the ability to understand what to do when, I think Bumrah has done that brilliantly and uh, he's a great student of the game. He understands nuances. He bowls differently to different batsmen conditions, he assesses conditions really quickly and that's something that has been uh, the ability of Jasprit Bumrah. But in this series, what really was intriguing and what, what was really nice to see was his ability to swing the ball away from the right-hander or to the left-hander coming back in. I think that to me is lethal because if Jasprit Bumrah can do that consistently, the one coming back in is his natural uh, uh, angle to the right-hand batsman. If he can take the ball away, which he did in the series, uh, we know what he could do. I mean, he could just blast out the opposition in less than five or six overs. And that's the ability that Jasprit Bumrah has. And I think India is blessed to have someone like him. And I mean, 12 test matches, he's already picked up more than 60 wickets. So that's five uh, a test match as a fast bowler uh, is, is brilliant. And, uh, and you know, I, think, I think India is blessed to have something, someone like just with Bumrah. You played against and played with a lot of great fast bowlers in your time and I know you mentioned it's only 12 test matches. He's only been playing test cricket for a year and a bit. So perhaps we tend to get swayed a little bit by the now and here. But what's your view? Do you see shades of the great fast bowlers in him? The way that he bowls the Yorker, do you see a shade of, a, of for instance, of a Vakar or a Vaseem or the, uh, the, or the ability to beat batsmen? Uh, do you see a little bit of Magra? Do you see great bowlers and shades of them in Jaspreet Bumrah? Oh, certainly. I think he has all the credentials uh, to become a great bowler. I mean, he already is uh, uh, the number one uh, bowler in all three formats. I mean, if you look at uh, the consistency that he has shown in all the three formats. Yeah. India depend a lot on Jasprit Bumrah. Uh, to have that ability to do that consistently and carry that burden, uh, you know, he just needs to remain fit uh, and, and then continue to work on, uh, on, on that. And he's, like I said, he's a wonderful student of the game. He understands uh, situations better than uh, any other bowler. And you can see that in his development. So, yes, he certainly has the quality uh, to go on and become the greatest uh, ever uh, bowler from India uh, as, as a fast bowler. I think that's something that he has uh, and, and we can see that uh, those kind of shades early in his career. So it's still a long way for him uh, and uh, you know it's, it's wonderful to see uh, the kind of uh, uh, performances that he's been able to put together. What really uh, differentiates between a Jasprit Bumrah and someone starting that young is his ability to convert those two wickets, three wicket hauls to a yeah. five wicket haul and then win matches for the country. I think that uh, is, is the hallmark of, of uh, a, a, a bowler. You want bowlers to be match winners and that's what Jasprit Bumrah does uh, and he's shown that in such a young career over the last few years. You touched on it, Anil, but I'd like you to expand on it. Now, this Ashwin situation is uh, quite intriguing for those sitting on the outside. In fact, even the messaging from the management seems to be that he's fallen in the pecking order when it comes to India picking only the one uh, spinner overseas. What's your view, Anil? Do you believe that uh, that decision-making is, um, is fine given the performances that Ashwin's had over the last year, year and a half? Or do you believe India needs to find a way to uh, get him back to uh, the, uh, get him back into the 11 especially in these overseas test matches no oh, he's still your in, uh, you know best spinner uh, that you have uh, yes there've been a few instances where he's had uh, injuries and not performed to his potential but ashwin is your number one uh, spinner in the team and he should be a part of the squad he should be playing in the 11 you have to make uh, uh, you know uh, a way of getting him in uh, and I strongly believe that this team uh, certainly can have two spinners uh, in the squad because both Ashwin and Jadeja uh, are wonderful batsmen. You know, Ashwin has had, what, four, four test hundreds. Yeah. Uh, Jadeja has been really consistent with uh, the bat. Uh, he did that again in the West Indies. He's a wonderful bowler too. As, and both of them in tandem can certainly uh, be a handful for the opposition. So, yes, when India travel outside... Uh, it's not always that you 
get four bowlers to pick up 20 wickets. Ideally, if you have the combination of uh, three fast bowlers and two spinners, uh, wherein your two spinners can also contribute with the bat, that's the perfect scenario. And you have two batsmen, I mean two spinners, frontline spinners, who are equally good as batsmen. So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of time. I strongly believe that Ashwin will certainly make it into the into the playing eleven. So in, the management needs to look at that, uh, uh, and and then uh, you know I'm I'm a bit surprised that someone like uh, the ability and the quality of Ashwin is sitting out uh, in a Test match. Uh, that brings me to the other issue, which is the rise of uh, Ravindra Jadeja in a sense almost uh, leapfrogging Ashwin to become the first choice overseas spin bowler. Do you believe it's because of his ability? Uh, uh, because of the overall package that he offers, that he uh, uh, that he is uh, making that claim and actually succeeding in it, the fact that he can bat in the lower order, the energy he offers in the field, etc. Yes, of course. I mean, he's he's a complete package. You know, he, he has the the ability to bowl long spells, control the bowling from one end. Uh, he's a brilliant fielder, the number one fielder in the world today. Uh, he's shown over the last one one and a half years uh, consistency with his batting. Uh, we always knew the potential of Ravindra Jareja as a batsman, but it was quite sporadic in the way he uh, showed his batting performances. Uh, yes, that's the reason Jareja is, uh, is, is playing in the 11. But I strongly believe that both these uh, spinners uh, can be uh, accommodated in the playing 11. Yes. Not too many problem areas, Anil, in that series in the West Indies, but one I think everyone is now uh, wondering what that outcome will be, which is KL Rahul. Four innings, a couple of starts, but uh, really had uh, not a very good series. And now there are other contenders for that role as opening batsmen. Do you believe enough has happened for Rahul to lose his spot as India opener now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tricky uh, situation that uh, KL is in, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, done well, uh, he's got, like you said, he's got starts but not converted them, he's got out, he struggled, he, he looked like, uh, I think in the last innings, uh, he looked like he was struggling uh, to, f uh, to get bat on ball, he was not his usual self, I think he's, he seems to be in a bit of a uh, a, a mindset where he's not really sure whether to attack, whether to defend. Uh, he's unsure. You can see it in his footwork. Uh, so I think I think uh, you know that's 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 the problem. I think it's all in the mind. Yes, there's a there could be some technical issues, but then uh, you know if the mind is not clear, uh, if the thought process is not clear, then that doesn't help. Then your technical issues get uh, exaggerated. So I think it's important that he has a clear mind, goes out. Uh, I don't know uh, the messaging that has come through. I, I think the support has been there for KL Rahul. So I think he needs to start scoring runs uh, in domestic cricket. Once he gets a couple of hundreds in domestic cricket uh, and then uh, gets into a test match scenario, he'll be a lot more confident. I think it's a confidence issue that uh, that is there with KL Rahul. Yes, uh, you know that's a position that probably uh, there will be a lot of discussion before the next test match uh, that India plays in. But... You know, having said that, if you have uh, uh, won a test series and then you want to go in, unless there is a, a replacement, uh, you know, Prithvi Shaw is uh, injured, so he's coming back from uh, from that injury as well. So unless there's a ready replacement, uh, I'm not really sure whether India will be looking at somebody else. Yes, there are a couple of guys on the domestic circuit who are making a case, but uh, there's been a left field suggestion doing the rounds, Anil, and I wondered what your thoughts on there on that was in a way similar to how Virendra Sehwag was asked to open the batting for India and that worked, uh, so, uh, that worked so wonderfully well. There are some now who are starting to say that perhaps look at Rohit Sharma for that role. He does it very well in one-day cricket. He can't seem to break into that Indian middle order. So maybe look at him in that role. You only know when you, uh, you know, actually uh, do that. But I'm not really sure about uh, pushing Rohit at, at the top, uh, you know, unless it's a desperate situation. Yes, are we in a desperate situation where uh, uh, we are looking for an opener? If there's someone who's done well at the domestic level, uh, is it worth considering that? Or uh, should Rohit, uh, you know, yes, he's a high-quality player sitting on the bench. Uh, should he be pushed at the top? I mean, th those things you need to uh, uh, start looking. Yes. He certainly has the experience. He certainly has the ability to uh, uh, to bat anywhere in a, in the batting lineup. Uh, opening the batting in Test matches, uh, you know, I think it's a bit different to opening in in, in uh, One Day cricket. 
Uh, but having said that, you you'll only know when uh, you you push him. Let me ask you about some other positives. Uh, Hanuma Vihari, in particular, there was uh, some debate when he was selected for that uh, uh, number six position ahead of Rohit Sharma. But then he ends up as the series' highest uh, run getter. What do you make of him, Anil? Uh, from whatever little you've seen uh, seen of him, do you sense that this is a player who could have a reasonably long career? I think for he's he's made for Test cricket uh, in terms of uh, what he has shown in the recent series against West Indies. Uh, uh, you know, he left a lot of deliveries. Uh, that's what you want uh, when, if your team is in trouble, you want the batsman to leave a lot of deliveries, uh, wait for the bowler to bowl at you, uh, play to your strengths, which was mostly on the onside. And if it was pitched up, then he would just uh, play through the covers. So just waited for the bowler to come to him rather than him going to the bowler. And that's what you want uh, someone like, a, uh, you know, a batsman, so you need you have two batsmen like that. I mean you have uh, you have Pujara, you have Vihari. So I think in that sense the team gets balanced in that fashion. Uh, but it's really nice that uh, uh, somebody uh, not really uh, a force in in uh, in in the shorter format uh, being given an opportunity in a Test match has come through trumps. Uh, I think that really augurs well uh, for the young man and also he's shown uh, a lot of uh, s mental strength uh, to come through and, and do well. Uh, it was his first test 100, uh, it was not easy, he had to work hard at it. Yeah, also one uh, thought I wanted to get from you, Anil, on Ajinkya Rahane. He's had a little bit of a down period in uh, in Test cricket. Hadn't made a lot of runs, or at least hadn't made a big hundreds uh, for a, for the last couple of years. So just settling back into that spot and uh, uh, and uh, making contributions. He's another player that will come off this series believing that now he can have a big season ahead. Oh yes, I'm really happy for Ajinkya Rahane because he's such a uh, you know hard worker and he hasn't had the success. Uh, over the last couple of years, he's, he's had good hundreds and then nothing coming through. He's been dropped. Uh, he's come back into this uh, uh, team. He's the vice captain of the team. Uh, so there's a lot of things riding on uh, Ajinkya Rahane. Uh, he wasn't picked for the one dayers. Uh, he's obviously missed out on the T20. Uh, so it's nice to see Rahane come back into form. Uh, again, you know, uh, he, I also feel that he was uh, uh, fighting everything between the between the years here, and and uh, he's won th won that battle. You know, he's gone through. Uh, he hadn't had scored a hundred over the last uh, few matches leading up to the series. So a lot of things in common between him and K L Rahul. You know, Ajinkya Rahane uh, has has gone past that with his experience, with his class, and also his temperament. Uh, you know, I'm really glad that uh, he's come through, and uh, now. You know, I don't think one needs to start thinking about uh, Rahane, whether he'll score, whether he won't score, because in England he was in two minds. You could see that. Before we let you go, Anil, I just wanted a couple final thoughts on uh, the, the uh, season that's coming up, in particular because of the T20 World Cup and India building up to that. The Dhoni situation, how do you read it? <laughs> it just seems, uh, it seems very intriguing. Here he is. Apparently, the message coming through is he's opting out of this series, but the, uh, the selectors seem to be saying that uh, we, uh, it's almost a line in the sand kind of thing. How do you read it, Anil? I mean, is there, uh, is there an exit plan that doesn't seem to be on script from both, from both parties? I think India, you know, the selectors will have to take a call as to uh, which team will or which is the likely team that you would want uh, in the World Cup because the World Cup is just a year away. Uh, you would want... Uh, you know, a consistent team to be playing right throughout. And that's exactly what did not happen uh, in the 50-over competition. Yeah. I mean, you know, there were a lot of changes uh, leading up to the World Cup. <clears throat> we, we were still not sure about who that number four would be. I think the whole World Cup, we kept discussing who should bat at number four uh, in, in a 50-over competition. And that's not what you want leading into a T20 World Cup. You would want all those roles and responsibilities to be fixed and make sure that you have backups for certain positions just in case uh, somebody gets injured or somebody is out of form. Uh, so, yes, <clears throat> you know, there would be certainly some discussions about uh, uh, exit plan like what you just mentioned. Uh, but having said that, you know, MS Dhoni certainly deserves a, a, a proper 
uh, uh, you know, send off whenever he decides to uh, move on from uh, the sport. But I think, you know, for uh, for the team's sake and for everyone else's sake, I think uh, the selectors need to sit down and, and have a discussion around what the plans are because it's important uh, that that needs to be communicated. If the selectors believe that MS Dhoni is in the scheme of things for the T20 World Cup, then I think he should be playing every game. Uh, if he's not, then I think it's important that they have a discussion around how they need to make this uh, uh, happen. I think they need to do that uh, whenever uh, in the next couple of months uh, to take a call. So, like I mentioned, he certainly deserves uh, a, a, a proper uh, send-off uh, whenever that happens. But having said that, the communication channels need to happen from the selectors' end. So, so let me try and put you on the spot on this a little bit. Would you have him continue as part of the Indian team now that the World Cup is done and dusted? Would you look at him for another year or not? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think, you know, Rishabh Panth has certainly uh, made a, a lot of claims uh, as, as a keeper batsman, especially in the T20 format. So I think it's important to have a conversation. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned, you need to have a proper... Uh, uh, send off. He certainly deserves that. So I think you need to have a proper conversation around how you want to do that. But having said that, uh, you know, Rishabh uh, certainly uh, has shown that. He has also shown uh, some inconsistency, inconsistencies. So that's a call that the selectors need to make today that in spite of all of that, you know, are you going to back him uh, or somebody else? Uh, you Or will you look back you know i wouldn't so i think it's important that uh, the selectors take a call on that as well all right always wonderful to have thoughts from uh, anil kumble on uh, how indian cricket is shaping up thank you so much anil for your time thank and you, uh, hopefully we speak to you after uh, the south africa series thank you